Hey friends, welcome back. Today's video is very exciting. We are getting into the fall spirit even more, romanticizing fall, going to a pumpkin patch, going book shopping, doing house projects. We have some major things to update you on with our house, as well as my little home desk setup. We're, we're getting into it today. And of course, not to mention some fall reads. Excuse me. <laughs> You're gonna do that right now. Here. Hello. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even believe this. Absolutely All right. absurd. Are you done? Hit it. Catch. <laughs> oh my, you're just- Ow! Safety scissors, they don't have a point. Yeah, they do. Tell me why I have a, a little stab mark. He just tossed scissors at me. I know. Like yeah. We have a full day ahead and you're just gonna come along with us. success but it was definitely eventful <laughs> um caleb quickly jumped into a puddle yes on the on the bounce pad um <laughs> so he has no socks on and also it started hailing just a light fall hail just a light fall hail and now it's absolutely sunny again tell me you live in the midwest without oh no there there goes our pumpkins oh, no. <laughs> did you hear them they're gonna be, knock about they're gonna be cracked open dude I'm gonna be careful. I love all of those pumpkins that we chose though. They're very cute. I'm very excited to set them up and try to protect them from all of our neighborhood squirrels. But we are on our way now to Carhartt. Caleb has to return something and also we're gonna get him some new socks. <laughs> and also Barnes and Noble to play a game. I have a fun little like app thing that we're gonna play with. So we'll see you when we get there. <laughs> all I want is in a dream. Hey, so festive. Beautiful day. <laughs> now that we've ran 
run through the rain. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're playing a game. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Did you just wave to someone? No. I just crossed my arms. <laughs> we have this app. It's going to randomly choose who gets to choose what. It's going to make decisions for us on our shopping journey here at Barnes & Noble. Okay. We're in the DVD section because no one comes here. <laughs> Ready? First choice is who gets to choose what book I'm going to buy and or read during this vlog. Sydney or Caleb. You chose me. <gasps> I win. So what, what was the first choice again? You get to choose what book I have to buy and or read. <laughs> Man. <laughs> the power. Oh my gosh. Anything? Yeah, anything. <laughs> okay. But no, not anything because the next decision is what genre. Okay. So what genre are you choosing? I get to choose. No. Oh, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're like, let's go. Um, I think I will choose, oof, genre. You can choose two genres because we can do four fingers on the hmm. screen. I think I would probably choose the genres that I would be interested in. Well, right. So what genres? Like science fiction. Okay. What's your second? Um, I kind of want to say horror, but I won't find anything good there, so. I was gonna, that was gonna be one of mine. So, not horror. I'm gonna do science fiction or just regular fiction. Okay. okay. Figure out what finger is what. Okay. Which one is what. F science fiction, fiction. Okay, and then my two choices are fantasy or mystery, thriller, horror. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was sci-fi. Great. <laughs> Two for two, baby, let's go. <laughs> um, is there anything else? No. If you're stuck between a couple, we can make this choose. Okay. Okay, let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> First pick. Oh, I've heard good things. I don't have it. The first sister. I've heard first good sister. things. Check this blurb. Okay. What does the blurb say? Wonderfully imaginative and gripping. If you enjoyed <gasps> Red Rising or Mass Effect Fun. and wanted to see more women or queer characters, yes. this is absolutely oh for you. Oh, by R. F. Kwan. Kwan. Mm. So that's why I thought you okay. might like that. Yeah, 100%. That's a great choice. Okay, next. This one is my top pick for you. Ooh, this okay. is the one that I think that you would like. Okay. But this one is my top pick. You ready? Okay. Set. Set. <gasps> oh, look at that little cat. Look at him. Oh. I don't, I've never seen this before. Oh, okay. <gasps> oh my God, I love this spot. Yeah, so it's the wow. cabinet. This right? is this is matching the book that I picked for myself. Except this is a Korean. Oh, fine. South, South Korean writer. Ah, oh, the ginkgo leaf. Cabinet 13 looks exactly like any normal filing cabinet, except this cabinet uh. is filled with files on the symptomers, people whose, <laughs> symptomers. <laughs> people's, whose weird abilities and bizarre experiences might just mark the emergence uh. of a new species. Ooh, I, I love both of these. The cabinet. So apparently a grizzled cop or something Ooh. watches over this cabinet of curiosities. It, the filing cabinet contains all these like stories and things like that. So it seems, it seems cute. I like the format. It seems- yeah, no, uh, That sounds so cool. I've never even seen this. It straddles the line between science fiction, fantasy, fairy tale, <gasps> and acute reality, which- mm. I mean, the, co the cover art is beautiful as yeah. well. So. No, I think both of these are actually really great options. Cause this is a series. Oh, it is? You did good. I'm impressed. These are sci-fis that I would both be interested in. I kind of want to get both. I was worried about you cho choosing, I'm not gonna lie. I think I don't like good books. <laughs> no, not at all. That's not it. So this one is definitely geared more toward my interest. Yeah. And this one is I know. geared more toward your but interest. But like we have overlapping interests because yes. that sounds really good. Well, and this sounds really good too because yeah. I love Red Rising as well. So. Right. I kind of want to get both, honestly. I don't even, we can make the app decide which one I read maybe. And get both. Yeah. 
Okay. I kind of want to do that. Yeah, because I wouldn't mind reading yeah, this one as well. Yeah, that sounds really, really fun. Okay. Wow, good work. You ready? That's exciting. And then I am going to be getting... No, it's too hot. <laughs> getting Tokyo to Ueno Station. And then this box set of 1Q84 by Haruku Mirokami. This is really maddening though, how it like goes up and down and down. that's like, who did that? <laughs> what designer said that that was okay? Maybe we'll make I just want to talk. home we did also get lunch and go grocery shopping and now we're gonna spend some time finishing up one of our house projects mostly Caleb he is the best actually the most handy person in the world um, we have a backsplash now this whole wall is completely tiled um, all the way under here I'm about to clean it off and then we can kind of set it all back up again we'll put our hood back up uh, we'll show you what it looks like later but look at how absolutely perfect. Wow. Wow. And now Caleb is about to put the grout in this half of the kitchen. So it's a half wall. We're gonna have some open shelves, one, two, and one, two. And then this over here will eventually be a glass cabinet um, that will have some like glasses and things like that. Um, but this, you won't be able to see like the grid so much. It will look like this, which is, absolutely stunning and the craziest part is that we got all of this tile and more for twenty dollars <laughs> um utilize your local resource people because this could have been easily 500 plus dollars easily but we got all this tile for twenty dollars which is crazy so caleb's gonna finish grouting there oh, i could maybe caulk if you need me to he's gonna caulk <laughs> he's a, kind of a control freak <laughs> A little bit. We a wee bit. Um, but yeah, this is really exciting. I, he he's trusting me to clean off the tile, so I'm gonna do that and um, slowly start to rebuild that. But then after, I'm going to start reading whatever book I'm going to start reading for this video. I did end up getting all the books that we talked about in Barnes and Noble. Really excited about all of them because fun fact about the 1Q84. When I first started watching BookTube, for whatever reason, I saw this box set of it. I didn't know that like things like this. Exist existed. Um, I was very much just like relearning, you know, the, the book industry and things like that. I didn't know that like a box set could have this like very cool transparent case, uh, like this one book, but it's broken up into three. I thought it was super cool. And ever since that moment, I like haven't really been able to find it. And I definitely haven't seen this box set like in person ever. So seeing it was actually kind of cool. And I just kind of jumped on it. It's not necessarily like on my immediate TBR, but this one that was more so of like, like a, I don't know, nostalgic sort of thing. I'm excited about it. And then obviously Caleb's two picks, which were both phenomenal. Very excited about those. Um, found out that The First Sister is a completed trilogy. So this is book one. And then The Cabinet, which I'm super stoked about. If I choose one of the two that Caleb picked today, if I choose one of these to read in this video, I think it's going to be The Cabinet. Oops. Going to be the cabinet. Um, I might start it, but also I think I'm going to start Slewfoot as well by Brahm. This is, it says A Tale of Bewitchery. I think that it is like folk horror and I've heard nothing but good things. Like I know that this was on many people's best book of the year, the year that this came out. And I recently found out that I am really, really into folk horror. So I think I want to start this too. The other book that I got was this Tokyo Ueno Station by Yu Miri. This is really exciting because I have of the end of August by this author, but it's so long. It's like over 700 pages and I really loved her writing, but like that book is very much of a, like, like a feat. I think I read like 75 or hundred pages and then I had to DNF it just because I wasn't in a historical fiction mood, but it is one that I want to go back and continue. This is really fun because I love the cover. And also when Caleb and I were in Tokyo, we definitely went to this Ueno station. So that was kind of cute to see in the wild. And it is described as a surreal moving story of a homeless 
ghost who haunts one of Tokyo's busiest train stations. That's all I needed to know. I was really excited to see it. It's just so stunning as well. Love it. But yeah, I really, I really kind of feel like starting Slewfoot. It looks so spooky and I think that it's the move. After I clean the kitchen. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm at vantage point uh, Message from the highest Now it's coming up My mouth Let it rain down on my body Watch it blossom in a month We did the label for nobody Now it's time to build The fruits of the art Of our souls Let the truth Once again Some of this stuff belongs over here, but Caleb is finishing up caulking this side and then it'll be hot to go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Caleb's going to finish that. Um, dinner's ready. We are going to eat it here shortly. But while we're waiting, I wanted to tell you a quick little update on Slewfoot because I got to chapter two. These chapters are really long. I'd like to show you, <laughs> first of all, my bookmark. I love this so much. Chapter headings, also very spooky. The middle of this book has a lot of like illustrations, like really beautifully done. This is Abatha, this is our main character. We have these two creatures, Forest and Creek. I don't know, but I'm a little scared. This one is Sky, and then Samson. <laughs> Samson is involved in the opening scene. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Then we have Feet and Slewfoot themselves, and of course, the witch. So Slewfoot opens up with our main character. What did I just say her name was? Abatha. She is almost 20, is from, I think, Europe, and then got married off to this man that is seemingly sort of nice, um, but lives in a Puritan village or community. So very strict. Women don't have any power. They have to be very modest. They cannot speak or have a say in anything that goes on, especially business matters. So that's sort of the community that she is married into. She is not used to this. She's sort of like fiery and outspoken. She sits with the servants at, at church because they have not yet welcomed her. Um, but this book opens up with first and foremost, like three pages of Slewfoot actually like waking up and it's very eerie. I love how it's written right away. Um, it's sort of making me nervous to go camping later this weekend already. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yeah, I feel oh. like, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried. No, baby, stop. <laughs> no, it's gonna be so good. Change books. I'm not gonna change books. <laughs> But after after that initial like very spooky eerie scene, which involves the next part because Abatha is searching for their missing goat, which goat. it's always a fucking goat. <laughs> and this goat is very important because it is a male goat. They only have female goats and they need to start breeding more goats in order to, to make money. Um, but lo and behold, this goat is the like sacrifice basically for the first three pages when Slewfoot is waking up and Abatha is trying to find it, whatever. We have our first interaction with sort of like the supernatural very early on, uh, very minimal, but it sort of is opening the door and really piquing my interest. I'm really excited to continue. I immediately like the writing. And I think that Abatha is a really interesting main character because I love an outspoken girl, especially in a situation that she's in. I think it's going to be very, very exciting on many different levels. So things are going good. I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing. I don't know how actually like scary this is gonna be. So we're just gonna roll the dice. Oh, um, I told you that I would tell you about Samson. Samson was the name of the goat that went missing. <laughs> so this is now Samson. So that's what we have going <laughs> for us. But okay, I'm gonna start plating at dinner. We're gonna watch some Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We're re-watching it. It was a spontaneous decision. Nine-Nine? Nine-Nine, Nine-Nine. <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. And I will show you the before and after of this little corner as well. But you know, everyone round of applause for Caleb because he really put in the work and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's stunning. And like I said earlier, it's even more stunning because it was only $20. Cheers. <laughs>
friends, good morning or good afternoon, I guess. It is now like 2.30. Definitely have been reading Slewfoot for the vast majority of my day. I do have it on audio as well. So while I was working out, I was listening to it. While I cleaned the kitchen, I was listening to it. I would recommend the audiobook. I think it's phenomenal. I'm over halfway and I'm really looking forward to continuing and finishing it today. It's way less like spooky and scary than I thought it was going to be. It definitely did open up with like big eerie vibes. <laughs> Since then, it's sort of like settled down on like the horror and we're more so focusing on like the folklore aspect of the story and it's been really really interesting especially because the folklore element itself like who we are calling Samson isn't really remembering who he even is. While these two little creepy characters, the possum and the fish with the baby face, Forest and Creek, like they are sort of the malevolent creatures that are trying to make Samson, the like folklore character, do evil things <laughs> in order for him to remember who he is and like how he got to where he is and how he has forgotten who he is because there's this whole historical part of the story that we are, I think, about to understand due to scenes that are actively unfolding. But honestly, like this book is phenomenal. It definitely deserves the hype. I am having such a good time listening and reading along. The atmosphere is 100% on point. I love our main character. Abatha is just this like perfect, strong-willed, witchy woman, and I just adore her. This is like the perfect book to read for the like spooky autumnal season. So now I am actively doing reading sprints with my patrons, and I'm going to keep reading Slewfoot. I think I could finish this in a couple hours, so I might see you. I hopefully should see you later tonight because also today I'm getting my monitor in the mail for my home desk setup where I can plug in my computer via like a USB-C cord and then have like an actual like desk setup to edit and type and write and do whatever else I want to do. Um, it's really exciting. Very much looking forward to unboxing and setting that up because I also got my other keyboard in the mail. <laughs> I don't know how invested you are in my little like home desk and home library setup, but this keyboard that got here is the keyboard that like sent me down the rabbit hole of being excited and caring about my keyboard. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm even talking about, you might want to check out my last vlog from my five star showdown, the final five star showdown video. I nerd out over a mechanical keyboard that sounds really, really, really satisfying. <laughs> and now the one that started it all, the first one I saw that made me be like, oh my god, I need this in my life is is downstairs. I have yet to unbox it, but I'm trying to save that as like a little treat. So I'm gonna try to finish this first, okay? We'll see if I can focus. <laughs> Okay, hi friends. I am just about to finish Slewfoot. I only have like maybe, maybe 45 minutes left of it, but I wanted to show you my little desk setup a little bit before I lose daylight completely. So I have this little lamp that was actually my Nana's. I'm going to turn it off for a second just so that you can see the backlight on my keyboard. It's so beautiful. I have it set at sort of just like a yellow, but it could be rainbow. It could be literally anything I could ever want. Um, I got the cloud wrist rest for the keyboard as well as the little trackpad. I also have a ergonomic mouse coming in, but that'll be here in a little bit. I have my little like fall leaves and things set up for now that's just kind of cute. My little ghost candles and obviously the monitor. Here it is. It's hooked up to my MacBook and right now my Mac is on <laughs> here, but eventually I'll be able to put it underneath inside this little cubby that I have. I just have to get a longer USB-C cord, which, you know, is fine. I can do that. But this is one keyboard. And then this is the keyboard that kind of started it all. It is supposed to be more creamy. It does sound a little bit more clicky, but it is much quieter. Caleb really likes this one and I, he thinks that he might get his own actually, which is exciting. Um, but this one is just so fun. <laughs> I really love both of them. They'll satisfy all the needs that I could ever desire. This one also has this little like gold knob, but I did get a little pink knob that I can replace that with, which I'm kind of obsessed with. Not to mention the little like mat that I have. Okay, ready? It's so cute. A little guy looking at the cloud and the cloud is looking back at the little guy and it just feels like that's me. 
that's me and that's also me. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. I really love it. I love clouds. I think this is just very cutesy. I like the little moon in the corner. Um, it just kind of made sense. So that's what I have right now. <laughs> I wish it was a little bit brighter out so that I can actually like show you. Um, but this little nook is just so cozy and it's becoming one of my favorite places. I love the dark green kind of envelops me. It's just so nice. I will eventually be getting two floating shelves above did you hear my shoulder? <laughs> to obviously store things and it'll look really nice. And then obviously I have some like photos that I need to get framed that I'm gonna hang up behind me. So, you know, exciting things coming. But for now, like first and foremost, I need to finish Slufa. I need to tell you how I feel. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to the end of the video. I want to give my final review on Slufa. It's really cold in my house right now. <laughs> Our furnace like thermostat went out this morning question mark but it was really just a little wire that caleb like went downstairs repaired it and now everything works again but it's actively still heating up so like if i look cold it's because i am cold and when i get cold my nose gets really red yes i was called rudolph as a child <laughs> um but hi hello we are actively packing well, gathered a couple things to pack for our camping weekend. And we are nothing if not ill prepared. So Caleb is actually out shopping, getting a bigger tent <laughs> and a couple other things that we're, we're bringing along for the group. Cause we have a tent, but it is only for two people and we're bringing Avi this time. And we just simply couldn't fit the three of us in, in the tent that we have. So that's what's happening. I finished slew foot like two days ago. I worked yesterday. So here we are here, ready to close out the video and talk about this incredible book. Slewfoot is 100% worth the hype. Sammy definitely agrees, don't you buddy? <laughs> I think that Brahm does so many phenomenal things within his writing, within the storyline. Like the pacing was phenomenal. I think the actual trajectory and like the layout of how the plot happened throughout the start to finish was just masterful. I truly was never bored. And this is one of those books for me that it's like, you think about it as like an overarching sort of umbrella as like a witchy folk horror, almost like culty book. Not, not really culty, but it is in a hyper-religious like close-knit community. But then I would start to think even deeper about the story about the plot and remember all of those little points that are being made like the conversations around religion and how these people are sometimes and just people in general are sometimes like deeming these things and sometimes horrible things as God's will and therefore making it okay and I think that that discussion was explored in a very very good way I think the folklore aspect was just phenomenal Ram is really really good at atmosphere and painting the picture as to what is going on and also all of the characters were Rin so well. Like, granted, a lot of them are detestable. Like, Wallace can absolutely fall into the cave that's in the beginning of the book. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I could give less of a shit about him. But, like, the fact that I feel that strongly, like, obviously, the character's written very well. Adore Abatha. Absolutely adore her. Her trajectory and her character development was just top tier. It was so good. This is one of those books where I was reading it and I was like, this is probably either gonna be a four and a half or a five. And then, literally, the next thought i have is no like it's a five star because there's nothing there's nothing that i i would change about it and i do feel like this is a book that i will keep obviously and reread in the future because i think that i could pick up on so many little breadcrumbs that i didn't pick up on the first time that i read it understand the sort of history and folklore elements a little bit deeper and the climaxing scene was just it was worth it it was so good very action-packed there are some like body horror and like bug horror things involved and i like was just delightfully creeped out. I love this book and I'm so happy that I decided to read it for this video. I will pick up Caleb's choices sometime soon because both of them are literally staring at me. They sound great. I'm still very impressed with him and his choices as well as our beautiful tile in the kitchen. So wow, what a time to be alive. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit and romanticizing fall, coming with to the pumpkin patch, playing the little game in the bookstore. Um, this was a fun little video for me to make and share a little bit with you guys. So that's it. If you are still watching watching then leave me the broom emoji down below in the comments if you don't know what else to say and while you're down there please do subscribe and like the video i always appreciate your support and of course be kind to one another and happy reading bye